Now a story that impacts a lot of people, the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. It's facing another challenge at the U.S. Supreme Court, but this time with a new justice on the bench and a solid conservative majority. This is the third time the high court has reviewed the health care law since it went into effect some 10 years ago. But there is more at stake than just health coverage. For some of our neighbors, they say this is a, a matter of life and death. I Jess Arnold talk with two women who share that sentiment. Jess? Yeah, hey Bruce, they are two of the more than 20 million Americans the Urban Institute estimates would lose their health insurance if the Supreme Court declares the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional. But to fully comprehend the impact that repealing the ACA would have on our neighbors, I asked them to show me what it would mean for their daily lives. Literally, if they overturn the ACA, it could be a death sentence for me. Laura Halverson has muscular dystrophy that requires her to spend 24 hours a day on a ventilator that costs her insurance provider a thousand bucks a month. We met her last year after the Justice Department filed in federal court to declare the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional. Coverage that was her saving grace after she had to stop teaching years ago and lost insurance. That covers my uh, breathing machine that you see on my face right now, it covers my power wheelchair, all my doctor's appointments. Um, it's literally keeping me alive. She says she brings in too much money to qualify for Medicaid, and another option, a nursing home, is not the place she wants to be during the pandemic. Being someone with respiratory failure, um, I would not survive getting COVID. Arlington-based nurse and metastatic breast cancer survivor Caroline Corum says repealing Obamacare could force a lot of women like her who need continuous treatment to make tough choices. Is it housing or is it health care? Is it you know, basically going into bankruptcy, which will happen very quickly given the cost of care. Corum and Halverson say if they go back to pre-ACA coverage, they could face high premiums, annual limits, and lifetime coverage caps that'll make it hard to get by. It's not perfect. The plans are expensive and they have really, really large out-of-pocket costs, but at least it's some coverage for access to health care. Opponents say it's more than imperfect, though. Multiple articles in the National Library of Medicine say some Americans lost coverage when the ACA took effect, others saw higher premiums, and still others believe it's a government overstep. Those arguing the Supreme Court case take issue with the individual mandate to have insurance. Well, there's just so many things the ACA does to help people live and uh, get affordable health care. Now, one of those things that Laura Halverson mentioned that the ACA does is prevent insurance providers from denying coverage to people with pre-existing conditions. Well, COVID-19 has left thousands of Americans with lingering symptoms that could preclude them from coverage without the ACA. Now, according to CBS, Bruce, the justices are supposed to reveal their decision by the end of June. Bruce. Jess, thanks a lot. Why are we still debating health care? should be a given.